happy Sunday, lovely people. I hope you have had an absolutely wonderful week. I've got a lovely, 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 incredible show for you today because I'm going all the way to Edmonton, Canada to meet solo artist Shimmer Johnson. But not only is she a solo artist with an amazing voice, she's also in a rock band called So Called The Wolves who have done the most amazing cover of Chandelier by Sia. I don't want to keep talking because I want to play it to you and then we can go and meet Shimmer herself. This is Circle the Wolves. This is Chandelier. Enjoy. Bloody wonderful. Let's go and meet the lady behind that song. This is Shimmer Johnson, this week's incredibly special guest. Shimmer Johnson, star of Circle the Wolves and many other projects. How are you, lovely? I am doing good. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you very much. Welcome to the Jaden Show. Really, really, really love the video we've just seen, which is your version of Chandelier by Sia. Bloody amazing. Yeah, I've always loved Chandelier and 
Sia is one of my favorite singer songwriters. So she's got when, uh, yeah, when we sat down with the band and we're like, we want to do a cover of something. I was like, I want to do Sia. And they're like, how are we going to make that metal? I'm like, we, we can do it. And, and, uh, Corey sat down and he actually really made it nice and metal. And I sang it still pretty poppy, but I love it. No, it's it sounds one of my it works so yeah. well, so well. So, how did Circle the um, Circle the Wolves come about? How how did it all start? Where did it start? Well, honestly, I was in a band called De Benedetta. Um, that is um, the guitarist's name was Barry Benedetta, and he's the guy that sang in Cinderella in the nineteen eighties. Wow, how cool! Uh, not sang, not sang. Uh, played guitar in okay. the. Um, in the album that went big their platinum album okay. and uh mm -hmm. basically he never ever he never stayed with that um he never stayed with that band but he just played literally just for that album and uh we got together and met on online and then we started uh writing music and we put out a whole bunch we put out one album for de benedetta and then um and then when covid hit he ended up getting it and passing away no. so yeah, it was horrible. And um so we took about a six month break and um we're still gonna do some more De Benedetta stuff with uh Barry's son at some point. Mm -hmm. Um but we ended up getting Steven Johnson he came to the studio with his daughter um originally um to start a project with her, Stella, his daughter, and then we ended up not doing anything with Stella and then we're like, well, why don't we do a rock thing? with you because he's a he's a we call him the professor <laughs> uh because he's a, a teacher and a guitar teacher and he's and he he's never done anything really original it's always been covers or playing other people's stuff so i was like well why don't we start a new band and then yeah we started a new band and it ended up turning into once a week and in 16 months we've written 59 songs wow uh, for circle of wolves uh just me um Corey and steve and then we also have our drummer keith that comes in after we've done written everything he comes in and plays all the drums um and just kind of does it in you know a few sessions but uh but Corey, steve and me are the primary writers of the songs and then and then keith comes in and plays his awesome drums and that's pretty much how circle of wolves came together and then we just started doing some touring and getting music out and right now we're doing super aggressive push of all our music because we have so much. Um, so we've been releasing a song a week. Um, the next one that comes out is Screaming, which will be next week. But we've re released um, six songs so far. We got six in the last six weeks. Wow. And yeah, we're just trying to get people listening to it. And uh, we got this awesome review today from um, from this other band. Um, his name is what is it because he just left it today yeah michael bot the michael bot band and he left this awesome review he's like you guys sound like evanescence and allison chains if you put them together <laughs> yeah there were really there were flavors of them actually i've got to be honest that's why yeah. like, oh my god i have to get her on my show that's amazing <laughs> So is this going to be, in, I mean, obviously we'll talk about your kind of your solo projects and the things that you do as well. Yeah. Is Circle the Wolves going to be a continued project? Is it something you're going to keep working on, keep releasing, keep touring and keep doing your thing? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We're trying to, um, right now we just, Circle the Wolves just did two songs with Cliff Magnus. Okay. Um, if you don't know who Cliff is, Cliff uh, did Unwanted on Avril Lavigne's original album back in the early 2000s. And um, so, you know, Circle of Wolves did Unwanted. And it was really funny is in on my Facebook, it said people you may know. And Cliff Magnus come out. I'm like, is that the same Cliff Magnus that wrote Unwanted? I'm like, I'm curious. So I messaged him with Unwanted music video. And I'm like, if this is the same Cliff Magnus, here's, here's our version of your song. Wow. And it ended up being the same one, and we started chatting. And then the last two weeks, this is just recent. In the last two weeks, he sent me a few songs that I might like out of the stuff that he's written, and we redid all of the music and and covered two of his songs. And so right now, um, he's going to see if he can get those two songs with uh, a record label in overseas, and and see what we can do over there as well, right? So 
That's pretty, it's always about networking and chatting with people and trying to get your stuff out there and you know talking with yeah. people like you and but that is also know. that's also like a business that's a full day's work in itself to be honest so yeah and I, I, I remember like doing a, a full shift and then having to do like eight hours when i get home networking promoting and it was oh my gosh yeah. crazy how how long exactly has circle the walls been together now then just since COVID, um, 19 or 20. Just, yeah, just a year and a half. Yeah, just a year and a half that we've been That's together. That's amazing. You've done so much in such a short space of time. Yeah. So we've been trying to get all of our stuff just out there and, you know, um, do podcasts and interviews and shows. And um, I spent hours and hours making my own list of radio stations for rock music. So I send every time I have a new single, I sit there for about three or four hours emailing each each one. and. Cause I don't like sending those little group messages because then it's not yeah. personal enough. Yeah, so absolutely. I send a few. Absolutely. I send a personal message to each station and each programming director, and in hopes that they'll play some. And you know, uh, CKUA here in Edmonton played uh, uh, two thousand pieces just recently, and one hundred two point three played State of Mind, um, and that's now radio here in Edmonton. And so I've got a little bit of local coverage yeah. and we did a two-week tour last month in the u.s which was fun and played a bunch of little like just little bar gigs but it was okay. awesome was people hearing you right yeah exactly it's the most important thing so where do you guys see circle the wolves going like what what are your plans for the group uh well, hopefully um right now um we bought onto a tour for next year for um it's the lead singer of Saving Abel. Okay. Um, it's his solo project that they're doing. So I bought on to to do those dates in Canada. So we're going to be doing more touring, obviously. Um, we're going to be releasing more singles and um, and an album and try to get it kind of out there. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, try to get as much radio play as possible. Um, do some more stuff with Cliff Magnus and and just keep on doing what we're doing and hopefully we can get on a, a big festival stage at some point. Um, I'm just waiting cause we might be on the pride 2023 stage here in Edmonton this year. Cool. So I'm just waiting on the final uh, details on that, but yeah, we're just, we're trying to just get ourselves out there as much, pretty much what every band does just get well, our music. You're, listened you're to. Definitely on it, sister. You're really working your, like working your craft at the moment. So maybe 2024 yeah. France and Hellfest, who knows? That's my goal. If we could that get on a huge nice. festivals overseas, that would be wicked. Even if it's just one or two of them, you know, you only need to get on one to, to start the role of people knowing yeah. your music. Right. Absolutely. So. absolutely. And what about, and what about Shimmer Johnson? Tell me a little bit more about her. Shimmer Johnson and is my soul. Yeah, no, Shimmer's been my stuff for years. Um, I released an awesome album in 2021 called Inner Me, uh, where I did a cover of Toy Soldiers with um, that was originally done by Martika yeah. and written by Martika and Michael J. And I'm really good friends with Michael. I ended up um, doing a cover of it. And I was like, but I never showed him the cover. Like it was done for like a year. And then he's like, I was like, I'm going to do a song of yours for and release it on my album that I want to put out. He's like, okay, well, I said, well, we can write one together. And when we did, we wrote a cool one that I'm going to release either this year or next year. Um, but he's like, you should, he's like, you should just do toy soldiers. It'd be cool hearing you do that. I'm like, I've already done that. He's like, what? why haven't you sent it to me? <laughs> so I sent it to him and he's like, yeah, release that. And so we ended it ended up, ended up being on the album and, um, and he got it, um, he nominated it for the Grammys to try to get it onto the ballot for best rock performance. And um, so it was nominated, didn't get on the ballot, but just the fact that people nominated. from the Grammys were actually yeah. listening to it and stuff, that was cool. And it's one step further to, you know, where my ultimate goal is, is to try to get my music to as many people as possible, regardless. Right. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And the inner me album is more of like, um, an emotional roller coaster. It's a mental health and what people go through and their ups and downs and their emotional states. And basically that whole album, lots of people 
said, don't put out that album because it's too slow. But I was like, you know what? I'm all about ballads. Like when it comes to my Shimmer Johns and stuff, I'm like the ballad queen. So when I wrote all of these songs, um, they're all slow to mid tempo. But I was like, I don't care. This is if I was going to put out an album, this is exactly what I would have put out. Listen, and what you're going to listen to as a as a listener, right? Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, this is what if like for instance, Lauren Daigle. I I fell in love with her, and she she is a contemporary Christian pop artist. And what's really funny is she's the one that helped me find my ultimate sound that I wanted because she she has this really cool way of singing. So when I kind of applied it to how I was singing and made it kind of my own, it turned into my inner me album, which is just breathtakingly awesome. And, and I've kind of adapted that into all of my current songwriting, including circle of wolves and, and yeah. So Lauren Daigle, I have a big thank you. One day I want to meet her because I fell in love with her album and listened to it for like three months straight. <laughs> every song and all of her songs are all ballads except for the one or two and so yeah so when i was writing the inner me album i was like no lauren daigle did it this way i'm gonna do it this way because this is the type of music i like and the way i like to sing so um and it's adult contemporary you know type pop type material right so um and, and then just you've recently, got to be authentic right i mean like there's no, yeah. when there's so much competition so many people doing their thing plus all the people doing what they've been told to do i just think yeah. the only way forward is being the true you now yeah and you know i'm not the type of person i'm not a britney spears i'm not going to be out there doing all the dance music and that type of you know poppy stuff i'm in my 30s so i'm like that's not going to be something that is going to make me big if it's going to if i'm going to get my music out to the public and they're going to accept it it's going to for my shimmer johnson stuff anyway it's going to be my adult contemporary or my pop stuff or pop rock you know and um and it's my true self right i talk about um lots of mental health um stuff throughout all of my music and kind of what people go through in their heads that are too, they're too afraid to even talk about mm -hmm. and uh, it's more you know, to show people that they don't, they're not alone, that everybody, even people like me go through all of this weird crap in your head. Right. And yeah. it's good to listen to music that shows you that, you know, you're completely normal and it's not a, not an issue to uh, go through all these emotional ups and downs. Well, I, you know? I also, th I also think as well, I've been, I've suffered from mental health probably yeah. even all my life, not just my adult life and my teens. I even remember, you know, looking back to even when I was like, you know, like under 10 of things that just weren't the regular emotional feeling, you know, back in the day. Yeah, exactly. And, um, but I actually think as well, you know, on the plus side of that, I think that makes you more a passionate and compassionate artist, I think, because yeah. we experience so many behaviours of ourselves and other people and voices that we live probably sometimes 10 times more life and emotion than the regular person without mental health. So that's really good. Exactly. Lyric -based. exactly. You know? And um, I'm starting to tour the inner me stuff now. I know it's a year and a half later, but you know, COVID hit and <laughs> there wasn't much yeah. we can do. So like Jill, I'll be in uh, the Chesney. I think it's uh, how you pronounce it. The Chesney, Utah on July 4th. Uh, for the July 4th celebration, I'll be performing for about 45 minutes. Sweet. And um, I'm going to be doing my Inner Me album. I'll also be at the uh, California State Fair on July 28th. And that's for my Shimmer Johnson stuff. So it's for my, my pop stuff. And I have and, to say as well, Shimmer Johnson, that is a famous name just in itself. <laughs> to be fair, isn't it? Thank you. <laughs> I love it. So when you when Shimmer Johnson was a literally, right, and not you know, not doing the whole kind of evanescent, styly kind of fierce. Yeah. Rock stuff. Who were your go-tos? Who did you sit back and listen to when you were younger? Oh, I, as a young, I, I liked my divas. I was really huge on uh, Mariah Carey, Celine Dion, Whitney Houston, all the, all the, you know, that's basically who I wanted to be. I would practice everything, all the competitions that I went into, I was doing, I will always love you. And, yeah. you know, hero from Mariah Carey, all the really hard songs that everybody tries to do when they go to talent competitions. And, um, 
and yeah, so and I would win some and I'd lose some, and and that's kind of my my go to when I was young, right? And I'm still a huge Celine Dion fan, and you can hear it in my in some of my music sometimes how I pronounce the U's because I listen to Celine Dion so much. But um, no, um, that's just kind of and then when I got to be like in my twenties, that's when I started listening to more like the Alanis Morissette and you know the grungier sound. And uh, then I started playing around with like pop rock stuff, and I, I fell in love with Tori Amos and and right. Kate Bush, and you know. And then I started loving the whole piano rock thing, um, especially Precious Things from Tori Amos. It's one of my favorite songs in the whole wide world. <laughs> and yeah, and then when I met uh, Corey, my guitarist, we started writing together and doing some country stuff. I even have country material. I just haven't released a lot of it. But we started doing some country stuff, and then we started doing the uh, piano piano stuff, which is, that's my ultimate love, is my piano stuff, working out of everything. And then uh, Circle the Wolves is just amazing and fun to sing live, and I get all my aggression out, so. Yeah. I got music. Yeah. I do all types of, different types of music just so I can, like, I can, you know, get all the emotions out, even Absolutely. the bad ones. <laughs> no, but, well, I'm, I'm cool because I, I live in Mexico. And um, I'm called the British boy of ballads because I yeah. just really love, I mean, like when I was younger, I was a pop boy. So I had to sing pop R&B. That was kind of easy. And yeah. God forbid you veer off of that path. Right. Whereas now, but my go-tos to sing would be like, you know, the, exactly the same as you, Alanis Morissette, yeah. Mariah Carey, Whitney Houston. Now I, yeah. you know, I throw a little bit of jazz in there, just not because I love it more, but just because I can do it. And I think I do it all right. You know, and stuff like yep. that. And now I just sing the stuff that I really love to sing. So it's actually exactly. Fun. But I'm releasing a disco track. So you know, it's like. <laughs> but I think we're at a stage well, now because of COVID that actually, like you said, it's about, like we said, it's about being authentic and you know not pigeonholing yourself. If you can do rock and do reggae and do pol um, soul and do you know a bit of everything, then why not? Yeah, and my recent thing that I started doing, I started working with a songwriter out of Vancouver, Rick Sloboda, and he's a pop dance writer. So he writes pop dance music, and then he works with like three or four or five different singers to either sing his melodies or what what we have set up is he just, sometimes I'll sing his melodies and I'll add my own melodies to it, and then we just split the song anyway. Sweet. Um, you know, or I'll sing and write all of the lyric and melody and he just does the music. And then he spends all of his time promoting it to DJs, like to dance DJs to redo the music. So, so far we've written like 27 songs since wow. January together. And, and 12 of those have been signed to DJs. Uh, Rafisi, um, he's a, a DJ from overseas released our our song that we wrote for Rafisi, Essence. And uh, he allowed me to be a featured artist because on lots of these tracks, you'll sing on it, but they won't feature you. Yeah, of course. Even though it's your voice they're using, they, they put it in the contract that they're not going to promote you, which is fine. It happens. Because you know it's my, my voice is still on there. And, and yeah. you know, but with Essence, my voice is actually physically on there and I'm being featured. And right now, it's only been out since February 17th, I think. And it's at almost 300,000 streams so far. So, so it's doing it's doing really good. And that was just our first song. And that wasn't even one of our strongest songs out of all the songs we wrote. And it's doing really well. And then um, I wrote this cool song called Golden that I wrote with my with my son. He's He was 16 at the time when we wrote it. And um, he's in love with uh, Fosia. And um, so I was like, well, what's writer Fosia song? So I sat down on the piano and we wrote Golden. Um, and I'm not a great piano player. I'm good enough to write and I can get out what I have in my head. And um, but Corey, my other my other half, he's he's the one that plays everything in circle and everything. So he didn't want to do Golden because it was way too poppy and he just didn't want to deal with it. So I sent it to Rick. I said, can we, can you make some music for this? Here's my really bad piano parts and my good singing and my son's good singing. And uh, yeah, he ended up 
um, getting a Egyptian guy to do the dance beat to it and turned it into a Fozia song. And it is so good. And uh, yeah, he just got it signed to a huge DJ that'll be out later this year or early 2024. So hopefully they'll allow me to be featured on that one because it's a really good vocal. <laughs> wow. But, um, but yeah, so I'm excited. getting into You're kind of living your dream, right? Yeah, like I, I tell every artist, every I have lots of people will ask me, why do you jump around all the genres? I'm like, because I can, I love it, I can do yeah. it, and I love, I love all the music, right? So why not? You know, yeah, why not? So I just, I just do it, and and I tell all artists that I'm like, you don't have to be lumped into if you're a pop singer that you just have to do pop. I mean the labels like that you know but just all in all and i think if, because most of us are doing it ourselves now so actually you can be a bit more experimental yeah sounding. exactly yeah. so i like to do i like to do whatever whatever i want to do <laughs> so i did so, so, country pop edm whatever come yeah so how does the crossover i mean like does shimmer johnson have more kind of uh, I don't know, like more preferential treatment than Circle the Walls, or if Circle the Walls is busy, but all of a sudden there's something on the table for Shimmer. How do how do they how do they work side by side? Well, I advertise them separately. So whenever you know Circle starting to get a whole bunch of stuff, then I I focus more on Circle for that moment and get that all organized. And if it's at the same time, then I'm just working harder, and I'll do both. Yeah. so <laughs> and and apart from getting everyone to hear you would you be able to choose if you had to choose between shimmer and so called the wolves could you do that with whichever you? one gets me to the most mass of people i would focus and you're happy on. with that yeah i like both of my i like all the styles that i do okay. and and like the edm dance stuff my piano stuff i can do that in my own time and the rock stuff you know, that one has to be a festival, a touring thing because of the the nature of the music, right? So absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So where can people find you? Um, you can go to for my Shimmer Johnson stuff. Um, if you type in Shimmer Johnson, I will come up on Google. But if you go to shimmerjohnson.com, um for Circle the Wolf is it's circle the wolves.com, not circle of wolves. Yeah. That's a different metal band. So it's got to be Circle of uh, Wolves. And uh, and that's all of ours. So Instagram, Facebook, you know, all of them, it's at Circle the Wolves. So Circle the Wolves is super easy to find. Um, Shimmer Johnson, Instagram, it's official Shimmer Johnson. And then Twitter, Shimmer underscore Johnson. Like, I didn't really think about it when I did all my socials originally with Shimmer. I thought about it with Circle. I didn't with Shimmer. So, <laughs> And then Facebook is Shimmer Johnson's music. You know, so. <laughs> you but you're everywhere. You, you can be found. And, and all your music, including Circle the Wolves, everything's on major streaming and download platforms? Yeah, you can go to uh, Spotify, Apple Music. Uh, we're on Bandcamp if you want to support, you know my music you can buy the whole dis discography there um you can buy all the music there for shimmer and for circle they have their own separate pages obviously because i try to promote them separately like i said um and then uh catalystrecords.ca has the inner me album that you can actually purchase and i sign it and send it to you so yeah so if you guys want to get a copy of that piano album i do have that too Super amazing. Shimmer Johnson, I can't thank you enough for being part of my show. Mm -hmm. I think being the British boy of ballads and the Canadian goddess of ballads, I think at one point we'll have to do a duet. It will be bloody nice. Yep. We'll have to do a collaboration or something. That would be super. We'll have to do a show. Or, yeah, we should do a collab. I have a full recording studio in Edmonton. so Okay. Well, then, let's, we can Anytime. do something remotely. I've got a little recording studio here. So we can do something remotely. So we'll keep keep that in the back of your head. So if you think of anything, <laughs> yeah, I was seeing that with Jaden. That'd be quite cool. I'm then always up for collaboration. <laughs> It'll be bloody good. Fun. Well, I'm actually, I'm doing, um, I'm starting this project called It's Do O'Clock. So I'm just doing duets with loads and loads of singers all over the world. So awesome. it'll be great. You should do that then. Up for that. Yeah. Be I am totally cool. up for that. 
but thank you so much for being part of the show. I do wish you infinite amounts of blessings of luck on you, on your career. I know personally, after singing for 32 years, how bloody difficult and what a hard job it is when you're doing it yourself. And I think you're doing yep. a great job and you're so focused and you're so on it. You deserve all the best luck in the world. So congratulations. So Keep doing what you're doing and come back and talk to me when things happen. So if something new yeah. comes out, a new tour or anything, let's do another show and promote okay. it. Okay. Sounds good. I'm good with that. Shimmer Johnson, <laughs> thank you so much for being part of the Jaden Show. We'll see you later. Thank you, Take care, honey. <laughs> Bye-bye. How amazing is she? And I'm absolutely exhausted just hearing how much work she does on a daily basis to promote her music. So please go and give that girl a hand. Go and support Circle the Wolves. Go and support Shimmer Johnson. Go and find them all, all over their social media. You've seen the list of their social media running throughout the interview. Go and check them out. Go and show Circle the Wolves and Shimmer some love and support and do your best to share their music and to tell everybody to love them. That would be absolutely amazing. Shimmer, thank you so much for being part of my show. You crazy kids at home, thank you so much for watching. Please, please, please like, please, please, please subscribe and comment and share and retweet and do whatever you can to spread the word, not only of Circle the Wolves and Shimmer Johnson, but also about Jaden and Jaden, Jaden Cornelius. That's me. How crazy is that? About Jaden Cornelius and the Jaden Show as well, because it'd be lovely to be able to share these wonderful people with more people. That's the plan, right? Anyway, I hope you have a fantabulous up and coming new week. I'm already excited to be back with you next Sunday for another wonderful edition of The Jaden Show. In the meantime, as I said, come and find me on all my social media platforms. Don't forget to find Shimmer and Circle the Wolves on all their social media platforms and to download their music on all music download and streaming platforms as well. Take good care. Stay beautiful. I'm going to leave you with Shimmer Johnson and Priceless. You're going to love it. And I'm going to see you next week. Take care. Have a wonderful week. Stay beautiful. Bye bye. As this mask hit and beauty that makes me me Color glass in a frame that's not meant to be Shattered pieces on the floor Had the scenes ended in insecurity Lost my words and my script, nothing left to read Ancient stories left on Said. You always made me feel so beautiful Then you tear it out like a centerfold I am priceless Can you see this? I didn't lose you You lost me You search for me
Oh 